Well, greetings, people of the internet. Today is Thanksgiving. Well, not really. It's a day after Thanksgiving. But I put together this little video. It's a day in the life of a man named Unky Joe making a Thanksgiving dinner. And hopefully eat by 6 p.m. in the evening. So, uh, if this is your kind of thing, great. If not, click away. I won't blame you. But uh, just wanted to see how, you, how things go behind the scenes here at Unky Joe's Playhouse. Oh, that'll work. All right, so, turkey breast. Time to get in, it's 3.30, we wanna eat by five. They say it takes an hour and a half to two hours to cook this. It says no thaw, freeze to oven, but we're not gonna do that. So, here it is. And, uh, says remove outer yellow plastic net and wrapper. Refrigerate gravy pack until ready to use. If thawed, drain juices and pat roast with paper towel. So let me get a cutting board out here. Now make sure your sink is clean. Mine is. Wash my hands. I'm going to do this by the sink in case there's a lot of juice. This is a breast roast, so it means processed meat. I'm cheap. I'll admit it. I think this was like buck fifty a pound, something like that. Wasn't that expensive? All right, so let's get it over the sink. Cut the end off. There we go. There's a bunch of excess juice now. I believe this is fully cooked. Tiny. Now it's inside of a net and uh, you're supposed to pull the netting away and shift it so it doesn't stick. But not cut, don't cut this net, whatever you do. Here we go. Now let's see. Yeah. If thaw drain juices, lift netting and shift position on roast to make uh, removal easier after cooking. Do not remove string netting from roast prior to cooking. This is to brush roast lightly with vegetable oil or spray with cooking spray. Adjustable basing is not necessary. Okay, so not only am I going to do that, I'm going to. We're going to cover it in some olive oil, and then we're going to find some spice rub to put on it. So I could just use my old standby seasoning salt, which is what I may do because I don't believe I have any rosemary in here, any fresh rosemary. I could use Italian seasoning, but I don't know. Hun, what do you think? Italian? So we'll get some olive oil. I'll go ahead and use some Italian seasoning. And then we'll put some uh, seasons, season all on it as well. So first things first, do a little, well, first we're supposed to pat it dry. So, use some paper towel. 
excess moisture. And throw that in the sink. And then we're going to cover it with a little EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. Rub that in really good. Okay, notice how to keep it one hand clean. All right, now let's sprinkle a little Italian seasoning on it. Now this has marjoram, basil, rosemary, thyme, oregano, savory, and sage. It's so all the things you would find in stuffing. Give it a good massage. I need to rinse my hands again. And then we'll do a little seasoned salt as well. Good. That's our hands again. Now they include they include a gravy mix. I don't know if I'm going to be using that. All right, so. Three twenty-five for one and three quarters is two hours. So I'm thinking this pan will catch enough of the juices, so I think we'll be okay. Keep it in the netting. We're gonna put it over on here. And we're gonna throw that into the oven. Let's put our cutting board in the sink. We'll put it on the center rack. And we'll set the timer for 90 minutes. And we'll check it here in a bit. Okay, that's it. It's in the oven. So uh, we'll come back when, uh, when I'm ready to move on to phase two. All right, so we got about 20 minutes or 30 minutes left on the roast. So time to get our potatoes done. Okay, the trick with potatoes is cut them to the same size so they cook evenly. So these small ones I'll just quarter. Just enough water to cover them. So there you go. We're going to need uh, 
one and a half cups of water, four tablespoons of butter, I like my stuffing very moist. I don't like dry stuffing, so put a tad bit more water in there. So one and a half cups, and then four tablespoons of butter. This house, we use real butter. Now I'm going to end up using this whole stick of butter. So I'm going to end up using four tablespoons for the stuffing. And the other four I'll set aside on a plate over there to use for the, uh, whatchamacallit, for the potatoes. Probably more. I just like to slice them into tablespoon sizes. Throw them in the pan. All right. We'll set this pan aside. And I have a pan for the gravy. So they include a gravy. And I've had one and a half cups of liquid to this. So I was going to do this gravy, but I think I'll do the gravy that came with uh, that came with the turkey. Oh yeah, it smells pretty good. So pour that in there. Save it because we're going to need one and a half cups of water. It's got a nice taste to it. I would, if I had some fresh rosemary, I would add it. The problem is, this is, uh, yeah, I guess we'll add a little. We're going to add a little Italian seasoning, just a little. Give it that little sage and rosemary touch. I'm going to put that on the stove. So, We've got everything prepped now. We're just waiting on the turkey to finish cooking because it needs to rest. And while the turkey's resting, we can cook the rest of the items. All right, so we got about 15 minutes left on the bird. Uh, as you can see by the timer here, 15 minutes left. Hang on, cut off too much of my head. There we go, a little bit higher on the camera. It's hard to frame this in here with the stove and everything. I wish I had a wide angle lens. Um, cookie sheet. Now we're gonna have, uh, the turkey's gonna come out of the oven here shortly. So I'd like to get an area staged with hot pads to put that on. Get my, I think I'm done with spices for now. I think I might need a little bit of garlic. Well, I'm not going to put garlic in the potatoes. So I'm going to stage my area here. Keep the cutting board over here. And then I'm going to put another area here. We'll put the turkey. When it comes out of the oven, we'll put the turkey over here. Because I want to keep the heat in the oven because we're going to do rolls. And then I'll get a couple more hot pads. All right, so we need to get some aluminium foil. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn my potatoes on high. I'm also going to add some kosher salt.
I've got some bird's eye super sweet corn here. Yeah, it should be enough for two people right there. I should be able to do my cream sauce with my old handy dandy trusty saucepan there. Now for that, we're going to need, I think, a tablespoon of butter. I have a recipe here for my cream sauce. So we're going to need uh, a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of flour, eighths of a teaspoon of pepper and a quarter teaspoon of salt, so a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of all-purpose flour. All right, so these will go in the microwave for about three to four minutes to cook them. And then I'll take them out and then I'll add that cream sauce we're going to make. So I wish we had smell-o-vision in the kitchen. Now I'm going to focus on getting the potatoes and the stuffing done, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the heat on the stuffing because all I got to do is heat that up to a boiling, dump the stuffing mix in and it's ready to go. Put a lid on it. The potatoes, they're getting ready to come up to a boil. And I, have, I always use a fork. So then after I get the potatoes and the stuffing done, the turkey will be out of the oven and it can rest for 15 minutes because that's what it calls for. I can take any juice and add it to the gravy plus up to, equal up to one and a half cups. I need to go ahead and put a tablespoon of butter in here and a tablespoon of flour so I can make a roux. All right, so my potatoes are now boiling. Probably by the time the turkey is done, the potatoes will be ready. I'm going to turn them down to about seven. Keep an eye on my stuffing. I need a tablespoon of butter. Again, I told you I'd be using a lot of butter. Why not? It comes from a cow. Cows are natural. What's more natural than butter? Okay, tablespoon of butter. Now my brown and serve rolls, they get cooked at uh, 425 for 7 to 10 minutes. So once the turkey hams out of the oven, I'll pump up the heat, 425, and then I'll pop these in. These are the best rolls in the world, brown and serve. I love them. You know, don't kill yourself with things here. If I was cooking for a big bunch of people I go all out and make homemade stuffing and all that but you know we're simple folks and there's no way I'm eating 12 damn rolls for Thanksgiving but and actually yeah that's perfect staging them there okay so we got the rolls ready to go we're just waiting on the potatoes to cook and then we're gonna add four to five tablespoons of butter plus whole milk to the potatoes and then we're going to mash them. But I'm going to need a colander to drain them. And then of course we'll need to add salt and pepper to taste. That's the other thing. Don't be afraid of salt. Okay, the potatoes have been cooking a couple of minutes now. Again, when you can go through them with the fork, they fall apart. They're ready. This is the stuff for the... I need to turn this. Bear with me just a second. This is the pot for my stuffing. I need to find a lid for that. So once I'm done cooking the stuffing, I want to keep put a lid on to keep it hot and move it off the heat. Okay, potatoes are cooking, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the stuffing. Good old stove top, man. Here's a little bit. That only knows how long these things been on the shelf. So uh, take the bag up. And what's the flour for? Well, when you make a roux, the flour is for thickening. It only becomes thick when it's exposed to heat. So that's why you have to, when you make a roux or a gravy. So there's a tablespoon. I'll just set it aside there in that glass so that I can get this bag out of my way. Now, see the water boiling on the back? Turn it off. Move it over to here. Time to add my stuffing. The top off the bag, dump it in. Mix it up thoroughly. 
Make sure all those lovely little bread crumbs get bread crumbs get moistened. Put a lid on it, and leave it the hell alone. It'll stay hot. Now, when that turkey comes out of the oven, it has to be 170 degrees. So we'll put it right here. And then we'll hit it with our meat thermometer. It says it's got another 16 seconds to go. Now let's check our potatoes real quick, see how they're doing. They're getting there. They're, they're about halfway done. So, there's the turkey. So, when you open the oven, let the heat get out first. Or you go sticking your face in there. Smells good. Smells like turkey. Alright. So we'll take it out. Be very careful. Alright. Get our meat thermometer. You all see this? Good. Stick it right in the middle. Should be 170 degrees. It is only 152. So we're going to put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes. And that should bring it up to 170. Very little juice coming out of this. So we'll set our timer for another 10 minutes. check it again. All right, potatoes are just about there. See? See how they're falling apart? Just like that. Almost ready. Um, don't overcook them. Then they'll tick them I, actually, they're ready. They're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the heat on the potatoes. <clears throat> now the trick with potatoes is you want to drain them. Then you want to put them back in the pan and put them back on the stove with the burner turned off to get the rest of the moisture out of them. Nobody likes wet, nasty, wet potatoes. And then we'll add our butter and our milk and our salt and our pepper, season them to taste, and then we'll cover everything with a lid to keep it nice and warm because we've still got another six minutes plus 10 or 15 minutes resting time for our turkey. So let's go ahead and get these drained. back in. You're going to hear them sizzle when you put them back on the burner. Now I'm going to go ahead and melt, partially melt my butter. Thirty seconds in the microwave. Now look, here's the other thing. Use whole milk. Don't use that one percent bullshit. You hear the? I don't know if you can hear the potatoes sizzling. You hear them? Yeah. Burn off that excess water. I'm going to add a little bit of milk, just a splash to begin with. I'm going to salt them. Don't be afraid of salt, folks. I'm going to pepper them. milk or butter in here. They seem a bit dry to me. Get 
them mashed. Got butter incorporated. You see they look a little bit dry. So, make sure we got them. In fact, pour some more milk in. For our butter thingy. Start getting stirred up there, and that's much better. We get much creamier now. Almost a little more milk. Uh, you could use half and half. I don't recommend using cream because when you use cream, they tend to get too, uh, pasty, like wallpaper paste. Okay. Now there's a consistency I like. Now is the moment of truth to taste test. Perfect. Not too much salt. It's the right amount of pepper. Um, I'm going to put just a tad bit more milk in there. had time to taste it, it doesn't do a more salt. Go back in with my mixer here. Now let's taste it. You can see the consistency they are. They're good. So put a lid on them. Put them on the back burner so they stay warm. Very good. Now, I'm going to need a half cup of milk to make my white sauce. So, and I can actually bring this over to this burner. Go ahead and get my milk poured out so that it's ready to go. and start my veg. And you notice what I like to mix with is a fork. Butter is kind of starting to melt in there, you see that? So it's starting to melt. Nope. There you go. All right, time to take the turkey out. Let's see if it's come up to 170 degrees. And actually, 165 is fine. It smells good. Yeah, we're at 170, so we're good. All right, so we'll push this to the back. It needs to rest for 15 minutes. If we were to cut into it right now, all the juices would come out and it'd be a dry, dry bird. So we'll set that to the back. Bump our heat up to 425. Then we can put our rolls in. So we're gonna go ahead and put the heat on on our gravy. We're going to add one and a half cups of water. We're going to go ahead and turn the heat on on about three for a roux. We're going to go ahead and mix this up here. That needs to come up to a boil and then it'll start to thicken. This needs to melt, and then we can add the flour to it, start cooking that in. And once we get the melted and the flour incorporated, then we can add our milk and our sugar, 
let it get thick, and then we can just add it right to our veg. And now, if you notice, I'm keeping one burner cool. I'm not using it, so I can move stuff around. And once our corn is done in the microwave, we're going to drain off the excess water, and then we're just going to let it sit in the microwave. It stay warm. Now, you notice this. The roux I'm using for, is for cream peas, but it'll work for corn or any other vegetable you want to do. What's up, Z? You my official uh, inspector there? I'm going to go ahead and get another fork. So now you see the butter's melted. With the salt and pepper. I'm going to go ahead and melt the teaspoon of flour in there. And then I'm going to incorporate that. We're not in any hurry, remember? Bring the heat up. I'm just leaving the heat on three for now. I want to get all that flour mixed in so there's no more flour showing. And if at this point I were to put the milk in, we need to wait at least two minutes. So we don't want to do it any sooner than three. Just let it sit there and cook. That'll get rid of that flour taste. All right, that's how it means our oven's ready. So these rolls take seven to 10 minutes. I'm gonna pop them in. Set the timer for seven minutes. And come back to our gravy now, which is getting ready to come up to a boil, and I can already tell it's getting thicker. Stir it a little bit. Now my roux is, when you see it start to bubble, right now it's not bubbling, but you see how it is a roux? Okay. You'll see when it starts to bubble, that's how you'll know it's time to add the milk. Now, while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and drain the veg. Okay, we've drained the veg, put it back in its container. And we'll move that over here have it available to us. Okay. All right, so now you're starting to see the butter bubble. See what it's doing? Seeing how it's bubbling there? Now it's time to go ahead and add our milk. We're going to add our milk. And you got to make sure you're keeping this, keep stirring this up. We're also going to add a teaspoon of sugar. Go. Keep stirring. Don't ever stop stirring when you got milk on the stove. Start at a low temperature. Now this is going to thicken like magic. I'm going to switch to a spatula so I can incorporate all this in here and get it off the sides. You could use a whisk, whatever your preference is. I just want to make sure I get all that stuff off the bottom. And we can probably bump the heat up to about four. Keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, my gravy is coming up to temperature back here. It's still awful thin, but it won't reach its desired thickness until it reaches a boil. So we'll keep an eye on it. Remember, this milk was cold when we put it in, so it's going to warm up and then the flour will activate and it'll uh, start cooking. So have faith and patience. Okay, our roux is getting thicker, or cream sauce I should say. Our gravy is now getting ready to boil. Our rolls have four minutes left. We're just about ready to have Thanksgiving dinner.
Okay. You see the color? Oh, see the color? See the consistency? It's still too thin. You can keep it on the heat, let it cook. Okay, now our gravy is up full boil. We can actually turn that down. I'm going to turn it down to one because I don't want to boil it over. If it starts to boil over, just pull it off the heat. Don't panic. Turn it down to one so it can simmer. I don't know if you can see that. Just want to let it simmer. There we go. Now we're starting to see this, this white sauce get thick. This will thicken up. Now if your gravy is not thick enough, you can add a little bit of corn uh, cornstarch to water, like a teaspoon or a tablespoon of cornstarch. Um, but we'll let it boil. Okay, this is ready. Okay, let me show you the consistency of this. You see it? There's the consistency you're after. So once you get that, take your corn, add it to your corn, and voila, just like mama used to make you a cream stock corn. that up really good. Voila, boys and girls, you got cream style corn. Better than you can get it any damn restaurant to, I guarantee you. So, that's done. Now we're just waiting on the rolls and the gravy. And somehow I always manage to screw up gravy. This to me is way too thin. So, I'm going to get some cornstarch and some water. And you can do this by eye. Do some cornstarch. And we're going to get a little water mixed in with that. Now you could use flour too as a thickener, but cornstarch doesn't leave that nasty flour taste behind. Now I'm just going to add this to the gravy. And it should immediately, oh yeah, much better. And the longer we let it sit on the heat, the thicker it will get. So that's much better consistency. So we'll just let that cook a little while longer. So our cream stall corn is ready. Our rolls are getting ready to come out of the oven. And uh, our turkey has been resting for about seven to 10 minutes. Look at those rolls. Cooked to perfection, right? The brown they are on top, beautiful. Now, keep them warm. Just throw a towel over them. They'll stay nice and warm. Oh, just fell apart in my hands. Yeah, I'd say it's cooked, folks. There we go. All right, so now I can start carving that up. I'm squeezing the can. Will help? No, not in this case. Slip a butter knife in there. Size, that should do it. I hope I caught that on camera. Yes, I did. And then flip it over on its side and slice it into slices. I might do a hand. We'll see. Alright, so I've cut off some turkey now. Mm. Delicious. Do 
delicious. That's pretty good. And that's a hell of a lot easier than making a whole bird. So, Hey, hon. Yeah. Come get it. So there you go, you two. Turkey dinner. Start to finish. Green saw corn, stove top stuffing, fresh potatoes, fresh turkey. And then we'll, we'll add a roll to it. Top it all off. And if cranberry sauce is your thing, add it. If not, shut the hell up. There you go. Turkey dinner done. And it's only 5.40, so it took me 40 minutes. Not counting what it took time to prep the turkey. So there you go. Uh, Thanksgiving feast achieved. Sorry you couldn't join us. Been here to enjoy it. The turkey turned out wonderful. I'm going to buy another one of those next year. It's a whole lot easier than making a whole bird. And just for two people, uh, the, the uh, stuffing was moist and delicious and tasty. The gravy, a little watery, but it worked out. Uh, and we were so tired after we ate, we went to bed about 8.30. I didn't even get to have any apple pie, which is probably not a bad thing because I'm diabetic. So uh, we hope you found the video entertaining and informative, and we hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with you and yours. Thanks for coming to see us. Please give us a thumbs up down below. Leave your comments in the comments section. Donate if you're so inclined. PayPal, Patreon, and the uh, YouTube join button. Come back and see us again. Please don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.